Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Years ago, I did a radio show in Flint at a radio station called WFDF, and that's actually where the name Lato's Law came from. It's a call-in talk show on Saturday mornings called Lato's Law, and people would call in and ask legal questions of pretty much any nature, and if I thought I could answer the question, I would. And I got questions on all kinds of stuff, but the one thing that would always light my phones up as a call-in talk show host, was when I talked about property lines, property disputes, and things of that nature. So your next door neighbor's got a tree that leans over your garage. Questions arise out of that. Your neighbor's got a tree that falls on your car. What happens then? There's a tree growing right on the property line. Property line goes right through the middle of the tree. Can you cut it down? Could they cut it down? Could you cut your half off? (laughs) And these are the kinds of things that vary wildly from state to state, as I like to point out. So Todd sent me a note and said, Steve, check out the story about the tree, the tree that fell on a woman's house in Alabama. And it's a crazy story. And again, this might be the case in Alabama. It might not be the case where you are. But a Decatur woman is liable for the damage to her own home when her neighbor's tree fell on it. So she's in her house. Her neighbor's next door, neighbor's got a big old tree, the tree falls on her house, and that's on her, under state law in Alabama. So the story's from WAFF, written by Matthew King. A neighbor's tree crashed into her house on Moulton Street in Decatur on Friday. The tree was not from her property, but she is liable for the damage. But she does not have insurance. So in other words, her house got smashed, and if she wants it fixed, she got paid pay for that out of her own pocket. If I pull something over there, then the whole house is coming down, she said. They told me insurance agents will not cover anything because it's a natural disaster. So I'm responsible for my neighbor's tree, and I thought about it. I'm not the one with a tree in the middle of my yard. And so she was hoping that her neighbor's insurance would cover it. Because it was her neighbor's tree that fell on her house, right? I mean, I can see the thought process. Legal experts say state law in Alabama requires the homeowner with the damage to pay for their own repairs, and they can do that through their homeowner's insurance, but she does not have insurance, so the damage will come out of her pocket. And now the woman says that insurance is too expensive. They say it's like $300 a month. I can't afford it. It's too much for me. So apparently she's priced insurance and apparently she owns her home outright. Because as you probably know, if you have a mortgage on your home, a lot of mortgage companies will require you to carry insurance to protect their interests. And in fact, if you stop paying for the insurance, they'll start placing it for you to protect their interests. But if you own the home outright, well, some people let the insurance lapse and go, I'll live dangerously. Her biggest frustration is a technicality in the law which forces her to pay for the damage to her home out of her own pocket. And she said she's probably going to have to get a bank loan to do that. She said, it's supposed to be someone's responsibility, not mine, because the tree wasn't in my yard. I don't know who made that law. It's not fair. But according to state law, the only way the neighbor is liable is if the neighbor's negligence caused the damage. So, for instance, let's suppose that the tree got struck by lightning. Okay? Tree gets hit by lightning, and all of a sudden you notice it's leaning a little bit like this. It's leaning, it's leaning, it's leaning. So one day you walk outside and you go, hey, that tree looks like it's in a dangerous, precarious situation. Are you going to do something about that? Neighbor goes, you know, I'm too busy. They go for a little while. Hey, that looks like it's getting worse. Hey, I'm too busy. And then one day, out of the blue, it just falls over and hits the house. And you could argue and say that by not taking care of the tree once it got hit by lightning was negligence. Now, some people are going to say, but Steve, that's also an act of nature that it got hit by lightning. And so there's going to be a distinction between whether the thing that happened, the accident, whatever you want to call it, was directly caused as an act of nature or if the negligence can be somehow put upon the neighbor whose property it is. And so I've had people tell me that they had a gigantic tree that was on the neighbor's property, but it overhung their property. And branches fall off the tree. 
Now, branches falling off a tree might sound like a natural thing, but if you keep the tree trimmed and you, and you watch it from time to time, you should probably be able to prevent some of that, right? So an attorney that was consulted by the TV station here told the TV station that cases like this are unfortunate because homeowners do not have control over natural disasters. Uh, he said it's an unfortunate, and it's kind of a simple topic, but it is unfortunate that no, uh, somebody would be responsible for their own damages when the damage was actually caused by somebody else's property, which is the tree, but the unfortunate circumstances, that's the law in the state of Alabama at this point in time. So if you live in Alabama, you're going to want to make sure you've got insurance coverage on your home just in case something like this happens. Because, you know, you can keep your own act together. You know, you, you take care of your own self, right? And I've known people who say, Steve, I don't need insurance because I just take care of myself. I, I live properly. I don't get in accidents and so on. And I, you can be the best driver on earth. Somebody runs a red light and hits you. Don't, don't tell me you're such a good driver. You can avoid that. And I've been rear-ended several times in my life where I was stopped at a light Car in front of me, I'm behind that car, and a car rear-ends me. And I actually had someone tell me once, they go, Steve, I could have avoided that accident. How? By not being there? There's no place you could go. I saw that I was about to get hit. I, the, la the last accident where I got rear-ended, I saw that I was about to get hit. I realized it. I looked ahead of me. There's a car directly there. There's cars over here. There's, there's no place to go. So I got rear-ended, cost $9,000 in damage to my car. My insurance had to pay for it because Michigan's a no-fault state. But the point is that things happen. So if you've got a home, you might want to make sure you got coverage on it because these things could happen and you may be on the hook for that. So it's an unusual situation. I think in many states, you could raise the argument and say, it's not my tree. Your tree caused the damage to my house. I'm going to sue you for that. And then your insurance company probably just pay. But... Here we have a clear-cut case where it's no. You pay for your damage to your house if it's a natural disaster that started the dominoes falling. So I feel sorry for the woman this happened to, but that is the state of the law in Alabama. And apparently people down there do know this. They do know this. So you have to just live your life accordingly. But the Decatur woman is liable for the damage to her own home when her neighbor's tree fell on it, because the neighbor's tree fell through an act of nature, as opposed to falling because of the negligence of the neighbor. So I'll give you another example of negligence of the neighbor. Let's suppose the neighbor woke up one morning, was really, really drunk from the night before, got in his big old truck. He's got a big old truck, because of course he does. And as he's backing down the driveway, he, he slams into a tree that's rotted out because of termites. But the guy knew about the termites, but he didn't give her care about that. <laughs> so when he bumps his monster truck while driving drunk into the base of the termite-infested tree, the tree falls over in the house next door. Okay, that's negligence on the part of the neighbor. You can go after them for that. So there you go. Todd, thanks for sending it. Questions or comments, put them below. There's a talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Lato's Law. Admiration is possible without envy.